everyone, it is uh, Chiffs the Chiff Frog here, and uh, today I will not be casting with Ben the Bean, who I usually cast with, but instead I'll be casting with Weirdo. Hello, hello. How you been, Chip? I'm doing fine, thanks. How are you? Yeah, I'm decent. Didn't stay awake for too long, but like here we are. Uh, we'll be seeing GTFO versus Amber for team. I think the winner of this, depending on the scoreline, can actually jump to first place in the league, right? Above Team 7. Yeah, this is a pretty important match, I think. And we will be seeing this match be played on Oregon. So a pretty typical map. It's become very similar to the old uh, border. Just uh, a lot of teams are able to play it, you know, uh, very basic. Not basic, I guess, but like everyone knows how to play it or what they want to do on it. And we'll be seeing GTFO starting on defense. So they will have that small bit of advantage going into the game. But as we know, there are 12 rounds. It can go either way. Who yeah, do you win? Uh, I think Amber Fatima have this. I think uh, personally, after seeing them uh, destroy the sad little men the other day, I have to have to say it, it. It will be them. I mean, hey, I don't know what you're talking about, but I think <laughs> I think it's a good bet as well to say that Amber Fatima will probably win this out. So, uh, I think we will be going to the game in about a second. So. Um, Right. Yeah, so GTFO starting on defense, and we'll just see how it will be able to cope with the um, side of Amber Fatima. Yeah, like you said, we'll be on Oregon, a uh, pretty standard map. Like you said, both teams uh, looking like they can play this map. A lot of teams can play this map. It's sort of become the default, like you said, like old border used to be. So, uh, yeah, I'm quite excited to see what will happen uh, in this match. We will be having a tiny delay. No, we will not, uh, as the side of GTFO have now readied up. And we'll be going into the game right about now. If the stream... There we go. All right. As we head into the match, GTFO will be starting on the defense. So uh, that means that they will be banning first. So let's see what they'll ban. I'm thinking maybe a Thatcher ban, honestly. I mean, it's, pre it's pretty typical to see a Thatcher ban on Oregon, uh, especially from the first team banning. Um, yeah. either a Thatcher or a Maverick, or actually on Oregon, a Cali ban isn't that far-fetched either. Cali is quite, actually quite strong on this map, uh, with the long angles being played. You saw Corey from Rogue play uh, the Cali on this map quite often. But no, we will be seeing the standard Thatcher ban coming out from GTFO. It's now up to Amber Fatima to ban their outplayers. Who do you think will ban, Chip? Um, I'm not sure what to expect, really, is this second ban. Maybe a Maverick. We, we often see the Thatcher Maverick being banned in, uh, uh, banned together, so... Maybe a Maverick. Not sure what else they could ban, really. Maybe uh, a Saddleman special, put up the Capital. <laughs> nah, yeah. maybe the Maverick. <laughs> you guys are famous for just banning the Capital and Malusi every game. Mate, the thing is, the, re the reason that... Okay, no, I won't, I won't go into that. I won't go into that. Uh, <laughs> we're going to see Ember Fatima ban their second... Uh... Yeah, ban their second operator now, and I reckon it's probably a Mira. Mira or Malusi is likely. Yeah, I'd agree. Or but... Kaid, actually, okay. that... Yeah, that does make sense, considering the duo, um, yeah, the duo Thatcher and Maverick ban. So, hatches will be a little bit more vulnerable now. So, the basement, you can't just block off the hatches completely. There we go. So, Mira will actually be up on Oregon. That's uh, quite an influential operator, if able to use correctly. You yeah. Think any? I think, uh, I think we'll probably see a mirror if things start getting out of hand, but for now, I think we'll see teams uh, run their set strats that they've been practicing. Uh, I'm uh, I'm expecting pretty default things so far, but it does look like they're going to be going meeting kitchen first, so that's interesting. A meeting in the kitchen, arguably the worst site. So uh, other people have different opinions, obviously. I tend to lean to actually this site being better than kitchen. Yeah. Uh, or dining, sorry, but... Um... Hey, it's all personal preference, and at the end of the day, it is the third site, it is the off-site, so we'll have to see some strategies coming out. We will be seeing that Castle 6 pick from the Mozzie and Ace from the Capital, so... Their mute, the Mute Jammers will also be placed down as they're walled out. They won't bring any Bandit, I don't think, no, they won't, so... It's gonna be interesting, interesting to see if Amber for Team are able to adapt to this and uh, attack well at the site. Yeah, uh, an interesting thing to point out is that... Uh... The blue team are running the Ella, which is uh, quite uncommon, I'd say. You, you often run 
something like a oh wait, they're running a smoke, sorry. You often run something like a Goyo or a C4 that you can use to deny plant up through the hatch even. But um, Ella for the shield makes sense. I'm not sure whether she's running the shotgun, but it looks like she's going to be holding that attic area. So we'll see how that works out for her. So you aren't surprised though here so they actually six pick the mozzie to the castle rather than the Ella to the castle. You would think on on uh, on a site like a meeting where you need to roam upstairs, we need to extend with a Thatcher and a Maverick band, that mozzie mute castle combo would be really strong, kind of throwback to the uh, last year's SI twenty twenty one or twenty twenty, sorry, where SG got really um, famous for playing that kind of thing. So, yeah, um, that's very true. I think it's very strong. Uh, Drone denial is a big part in this game, especially for teams that aren't so good at uh, the gun skill, they tend to drone more and uh, you know, getting rid of those drones really helps and we see Mute taking out a couple already from the big window as he's just playing aggressive on the top right of the stairs here. We're just gonna see a bit of a split push here from that um, master, well not master, sorry, that bunk window and the attic window here. It doesn't seem that the side of the, um, he's not just okay, of Ez, want to take into attic. Maids and Flushed will come out, so that shield will be going down, and the first player will be taken out inside of Pig, as that is the Ayana of Praz taking him down. And JTD will also be injured uh, inside of Kids, I believe I was, that must have been a maid as well, so... Upstairs control has already been forfeited by the side of GTFO, I say forfeited, but they pretty much did side out. As that Mute will be taken down as well, Praz getting himself a double kill, and now it's a 2v4 in the favor of Amber Fatima, with... A minute and 45 seconds left. That's really well played there from Amanda Fatima. Yeah, this is uh, looking to be really good for the attackers. As I say, that castle gets a pick in the site. It looks like Ayana was just trying to drop and go for one of those picks there. They haven't finished playing the vertical yet, so I'm not sure what she was trying to accomplish there. Castle just playing inside of security here. He's already got a kill through the vert holes, but he might be able to find another as uh, it looks like Hibana's peeking down and uh, Sledge is also working on that floor. What I think you need to take note of is the fact that the smoke is playing inside of meeting, just uh, peeking the hatch aggressively here, so if anyone tries to take into Attic, they will be in for a um, bit of a surprise. Castle here is just hiding inside of security, so kitchen itself is completely free, and if the side of Amber Fatima are able to read into this, they might be able to just take in from dining and get themselves into sight. You see Habana here already making his way down the small tower stairs as she's also being live joined into dining. The castle barricade is present on dining door, so I take it back, it's not exactly a free entrance, but you can do such a thing as castle actually has opted to drop down into freezer. So now, kitchen is completely free, but the smoke will be denying that with his smoke canisters. Yeah, Hibana just using her pellets to open up the barricade there as uh, she was castled out and now they're allowed it in, as castle has fallen back, so... It looks like Sledge is on bottom white stairs and Castle is unaware of this. Uh, maybe he's going to swing it now and... Oh, uh, wow, okay. The Sledge wow. being unaware of the Castle roaming around there. Ten seconds left. Yeah, with about seven seconds left here, the side of Amber Fatima have to take it into sight. The Castle has taken up there, so Wilderton Control will be in his favor. He actually drops down and the side of Amber, Amber Fatima gets two kills. Somehow the castle isn't actually able to win his team out the round, even though being upstairs, he opts for the drop down and the fake plan from Naj, I don't know how to say that name, I'm just going to say Naj, actually, he comes off the plant and gets the guy pushing from meeting. That probably should have been Amber Fatima's round in the first place, but they almost threw it away by just giving them 1v1s and then somehow at the end they clutch it out there with um, castle not playing that correctly, I would say. Yeah, I strongly agree how uh, Amber Fatima had that top floor control and they just seemed to be in the driver's seat the whole time. Up until Castle was just roaming around and managed to take off picks on people who just were unaware that the defenders were even playing there. I believe Castle got one through the vertical holes and he killed the sledge on white stairs. So he, uh, he'd done his part in the round, I would say, but it wasn't enough to bring that round to a win for their side. So we are going to see this horrible operator that is called Malusi being played here. Um, this is just to try and slow down the side of Amber Fatima a little bit. And, you know, I, I reckon GTFO probably would be able to win out the rounds necessary if they just played a bit more passive early rounds. The fact that they lost the majority of their team in about the first minute is slightly problematic. Yeah, um, 
Interesting that we're not seeing a uh, smoke actually. Uh, we usually see smoke with a shield, but instead we're going to see an alibi, which is very interesting. I believe we saw alibi being played one of the other games versus you guys actually. Uh, I can't remember why they played alibi. I think it was just for the gun, but it didn't seem to actually help out a lot with the strat. She does bring that shield, but smoke also does that. And it looks like they just reinforced off elbow, and so they're not going to be playing there. I think holding blue is definitely a big part in this defense. If I remember correctly, I think it was GTFO that we played against that never extended into elbow and just played that blue door very aggressively. Talking about aggressively though, Ash has already made his way into that hallway by showers and is taking a little bit of damage from the top of those freezer stairs but is going to get away with the majority of his HP. Bandit, however, still operating pretty aggressively here and just falls back now as the Ash is going into dining or kitchen, sorry. But the first kill will go in the favor of Vandal for two that is the alibi of JTD taken down and that's inside of the classroom. As Praz gets himself another opening kill, Ash and Mute here in a very, very tight predicament. Whoever beats first boy will get the kill, but Bandit, meanwhile, will be getting a kill onto the sledge. A bomb has been located. Yeah, Ash coming very close to a pick there and Mute just wisely falls back as uh, he could have been picked off if he wasn't careful. It looks like Ash and Hibana are inside of meeting getting that hatch open, so... I'm not sure what the plan of attack is here, but it looks like Ash is just going to be walking down laundry stairs anyway, so maybe a laundry freezer attack is what we're going to see here. It looks like it so far, and as we see Ace holding those stairs, making sure nobody rotates up. We do see Ash proning. It looks like she's trying to get aggressive on this hallway door. And uh, Jaeger is still on top of the box, so he's been, he's just watching out that uh, the attackers don't walk down the freezer stairs there. That Amber have opted to leave the side of color alone and they want to push freezer and down main stairs. A few shots being traded back and forth, but no one actually taking any damage. And it's about a minute and 10 seconds left, the side of Amber for Tina can still wait it out. But the new tier could be very dangerous as it seems that he's able to flank if he really wants to. But the Hibana now is going to go make her way into dining. It seems they might have read into the fact that the new is attempting to flank as maybe there was a drone there. Prize has made as well made his way deep into freezer. And is just trying to hold across a little bit as um, peeps will be coming up from both sides. Slide will finally making his way down that green hallway, trying to flank into kitchen and dining, which he seems to be able to do at the moment. Yeah, 40 seconds left on the round, and it looks like the attackers have the freezer control that they needed. It does look like one's rotating over and uh, going for the flank, though. Ash doing a little bit of damage onto uh, Bandit, it looks like. And uh, the person in the hallway gets taken out by the Ayana, who gets traded back instantly. It's a 3v3 now, and it looks like the attackers have to make a desperate push onto the site. Ash gets taken down. And so does the ace. That's uh, a 3v1 now for the Hibana to work her way out of. It's not looking likely, as there's only 10 seconds left on the round, and uh, not really the control that they needed. Now, this is a pretty much uh, guaranteed win for the defenders of GTFO as Hibana. Does manage to get herself a bit of a KD pat, but end of the day, that will be GTFO taking the round. Yeah, it looked like a, a pretty lackluster defense, but it worked out in the end with the defenders just getting those picks that just halted the push from the attack. See, the problem there was the mute. Um, the mute played a very, very smart, I would say. He shoots out the flank drone and then just plays there the entire time. And then finally goes for that flank in about the last 15 seconds when the side of Amber Fatima tried to execute and it's... Just all gone downhill from there as Amber Fatima aren't aware of the mute flank. They get taken down, they also lose a gunfight, but I think that was laundry stairs and not able to do anything from there. It was basically a GTFO round through and through. Yeah, it was uh, very interesting that Alibi not doing much as she got taken out early. However, this bomb. round we are going to see the defenders go in the top floor and we saw, I believe it was a Mozzie 6 pick and 2 Frost. Yes, I'm actually very interested to see if the Frost will do anything. I'm not sure if that's a smart idea to just put it on the big window. Um, it could be spotted out quite easily. Like, you, you don't expect to catch anyone off guard there, considering that they would probably drone that specific area if they were going to try and push in or jump into big window. But hey, you never know, it could catch someone off guard. I mean, it did in our game on Consulate, so... Yeah, uh, your Frost mats uh, definitely worked on Consulate. Uh, you said that you didn't even know that they uh, they got trapped in a frost map, but nope, not at all. We, we could see from our observer that uh, yeah, they they just fell for it and uh, repelled in straight into the frost map. So 
we'll be seeing top four this time, so the side, side of GTFO opting not to go for a meeting and kitchen again, as they were pretty much slapped when they were on that side, but not fully. I mean, the castle almost clutched it out for them, but at the end of the day, he also messed up in the last few seconds. But a very aggressive play coming out here, as the first kill will be getting will be got onto that Jaeger, so that's Gregory off of the board, and Ash has made her way into Shower Hall already, but at the Frost... Yeah, okay, as I say that, the Frost will also be taking down the Ash of Paladin, and uh, now it's a 4v4 with Hibana inside of... Wait, where was that Hibana? Hibana's oh. inside oh. of... Uh... Did the bandit just run past the Habana? No way. Okay, Habana gets in a gunfight with the Frost, and the Frost manages to just go down Freezer. Now bandit swipe wide swinging from kitchen door and is maybe able to get the Habana. No, they both just oh missed each God. other yet again. And okay, there we go. That'll be bandit finally getting himself a kill, but that's not exactly the Ash, and now the Ash will get that take down the bandit. It's a bit of a back and forth. No, it wasn't the Ash, sorry, it was the Habana. Okay, so Bandit did take down the Ash and then Habana got the lead bag, and now Frost is going all the way back down to Freezer. It's a bit of a mess, basically. Yeah. So it's a, a confusing one <laughs> Yeah, your banner just being missed by the bandit there twice and uh, eventually coming back to get their revenge. That was very, uh, <laughs> that was just, I don't even know what happened. I don't know what to say. You can't really analyze that, can you? That's just no. strange. Strange is the word yeah. I would use there. Definitely was strange. It does look like Ying is going to try and make a play in the big window here, as Frost is all the way on the other side of the map near Master. Sledge is hunting her down though, and I think he knows that she's uh, she's been down here, but she, the Frost has wisely rotated all the way up to Armory Hallway, so she will not be getting taken out by that Sledge anytime soon. It does look like Ying is going to go for this big window play. I'm not sure how well that's going to work out for her, uh, as uh, Sledge goes to rotate up white stairs. I'm not sure if they're aware of this. It looks like Malusi's watching the white stairs, but with uh, 40 seconds left, uh, it looks like anything can happen. Bit of a poorly timed nade there, but does do a little bit of damage onto Malusi, but that was only a tiny bit, nothing really relevant. But the Sledge will finally go up a few hits will be taken back and forth, but Hibana is taken down as the Snow Chemistries actually go and take her down. But Yin and Candelas are thrown out. JTD on very, very low HP, but it is still man advantage for GTFO, as Yin has made, it, made her way in and has started the plan. However, the cover of um, Crash will be taken down, and Slider gets himself a kill, and that'll be finally Malusi, wide swinging, getting the planter, and that's GTFO claiming their second round after a bit of a lackluster start on meeting. Yeah, that was, uh, uh, again, like, if we have to analyze it, I don't think there is a way to analyze that um, from, from the start, especially. The end there, it seemed quite uh, defender-sided, especially as uh, there was only 30 seconds left, and Ying and Ace, uh, I believe, was it Ace, or was it, I believe it was Ying and Hibana, actually, outside a big window. They had yeah. to jump in into gas canisters, Hibana got taken out, and uh, it was all left up to Ying in the end, and there's not much you can do in a 1v3 when there's only 10 seconds left. See, what I'm, what I'm a bit confused on is the fact that they tried to go for the plant rather than the gunfight. With about 30 seconds left, you have the Ying Candelas. I think it's better off you're just trying to go for the kills. Everyone is flashed, everyone is Defenders not really able to hear with all the Candelas going off. Trying to go for a plant where the smoke canisters have been seen to be thrown out before, I reckon isn't exactly the best play there. But, um... Well, yeah, it wasn't exactly the best play. As you can see, that Angle Fatima just wasn't able to get it out. Yeah, I think uh, I definitely agree with that. Uh, just yinging out where the defenders are and then uh, just pushing in, trying to get as much control as you can with the spare time, with the remaining time that you have. I think uh, going for gunfights there was definitely a better play than just going in and planting and dying to gas canisters in the end. We will be seeing Meeting coming out yet again from the side of GTFO. I reckon they did get close to winning it last time, but that was more of a single player's effort rather than the entire setup going it well. As um, Ando Fatima were pretty able to clear it out. They, they did it with relative ease. Yeah, they got those picks early, if I recall correctly. They, they got a couple picks early and took that top floor control with about uh, one and a half minutes left. And Not uh, early though. <laughs> Well, I mean, it's uh, it's early when you compare it to some other games where, you know, there's only 30 seconds left and the attackers have only just got on the top floor control. Some of these games have been crazy. Talking about earlier, that'll be the Zofia taken down immediately from, I believe that was the mute of uh, Drivery. 
Drizzly? How do we say his name? Um, inside of Green Hall. Oh no, that. Okay, the smoke is apparently there. Okay, so the smoke does take down the Zofia, and now it's already a man advantage in the favor of GTFO. A lot better than the start they had last time. I mean, last time they had a two man deficit after about a minute. So, Paladin here is just trying to put a little pressure from the side of uh, Dining. I'm just going to see a bit of pressure also come in from White Window as the sledge jumps in and it's also going to be taken down immediately. As that's not exactly a favorable gunfight that you want to take. Is that Strivery getting himself a kill with the MP5, uh, no less. Ash made her way into that shower hall and is going to try and take the challenge onto Mute. But we'll be, a play be, we'll be playing a little bit more passive and it's just going to hold an angle for now. Yeah, interesting that this attack isn't going for the top floor of control again and it looks like it's hurting them as Mute has taken out one. And it is a 3v2 now as I believe Ace just uh, got a kill from all the way through dining and through that open wall there. Oh, it was up through the hatch, actually, uh, as my observer kindly told me. Ash gets one to make it a 2v2, so we're back at even. And it it's not looking likely that the uh, defenders are going to lose this, but you never know what can happen. Yeah, with about 50, yeah, 50 seconds left, the castle will be holding his uh, own inside of kitchen. I always confuse kitchen and dining, but we'll be holding his own inside of kitchen. As we've seen the Ash try and push through tower, but the Ella here, I believe that's what the... Okay, that's not what the shotgun, but the Scorpion. So there we go, at close quarters, and there we go, that'll be the Ash taken down from the Ella. Now a 2v1 for Naj Fakers, as he will be going upstairs. Trying to see if we can get vertical control, trying to see if we can get maybe a pick from the hatch. Uh, he'll first have to challenge the castle of Land 2k Sorry, But I'm sure the call has come out from the castle that he is upstairs, unless he didn't hear anything. Well, he definitely knows now, as the smoke kind of like going down, and he will try to go for that drop. Surely the Ella will have to rotate over as the castle does get the drop, and the proximity mines will also be telling the castle where he is. With about five seconds left, it's very unlikely the Ace is able to win this out, as he's probably going to have to go for the plant or just even go for the frag. He's not able to get the first one, well, he's able to get it down, but isn't able to get the kill, as that'll be GTFO taking their third round in a row, and that'll be onto Meeting Kitchen. Yeah, I don't want to be the one to say it, but. Um... Like, when you're in a clutch situation, you can't wait, you know? You have to go for those kills, because you only have five seconds left, and uh, you have to make something happen. It was a nice effort there from the ace, uh, but ultimately didn't didn't come out to win him the round. As uh, I think that was pretty close, actually, towards the end there. Yeah, the thing is, in that 2v2 situation, you have the Ash and the ace, right? They were split up. If you, if you want to win a 2v2 as an attacker, your best chance is probably to just go for the trades and hope you win that secondary gunfight. Um, because if you split up, you might be able to get a kill, but if you lose, then you're putting your other team in a 1v2. And if you go for the refrag, if you play with, if you play together, you're at least guaranteed to get that refrag, right? And then you can be able to just hope you win that second gunfight. You, you give yourself a greater chance to win, is basically what I'm trying to say here. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely agree with what you're saying. Uh, playing for the trade, uh, very often, yeah, it, it works out. Like most of the time, it will work out, and uh, you can sometimes bring back rounds that look hopeless just by playing for trades. And you might, you might think, well, if there's more people on the other team and you're playing for trades, well, how are you supposed to, how are you supposed to win when you're trading? You just, you just hope that you get more frags. Really, that's pretty much all that, all that matters. Gun skill means a lot in this game so if you at that point good, utility doesn't really matter anymore it, like you've tried to go for an execute that execute didn't really work you've tried to go for a utility clear that didn't really work either so um, you just end up trying to take the gunfight and trying to take the win however we will be going downstairs again as Praz is already going to take his way into army quite early on but is he aware of the guy playing inside of Zulu, I believe that is? That'll be the Bandit, yes. So Zofia now will be trying to push into Zulu to take the Bandit down, but Bandit will just hide himself in the top of those freezer stairs. A drone will life ping him, however, and Zofia shooting a few shots and is actually able to get the kill. That'll be Blue Meisterly taken down. That's opening fry yet again, going in the favor of Amber Fatima, and that'll be yet again Praz taking the kill. Yeah, that was a beautiful start there from the attackers as uh, Bandit was just... Uh caught lacking there inside of on the, on the freezer stairs 
It does look like the attack are going to be going for that freezer laundry take that we saw them do before. It was not successful, but this time it looks like they're having an Ash backstab from tower stairs, so we'll see how that works out for him. Mute is playing on those tower stairs, so that's the first line of attack that Ash will have to get through. Or first line of defense, I should say, rather, as uh, Mute is a defender. Well, I guess you could say it's the second line of defense as the one of the players were already taken out. That, I believe that was the yellow peeking aggressively here from Laundry, trying to take the guy uh, out inside a freezer. Well, she will smartly opt to fall back as she doesn't want to give away another man deficit. This, well, just a man deficit away. We'll take a lot of damage from that nade, but we'll be able to escape with her life as concussions are now going to go through and isn't going to stun the Jaeger. There we go, the Jaeger will be great aggressively against self a kill and tries to get a second one. Does get a second one, that's Sledge taken down as well. The Hatch isn't able to give any cover, however, that'll be Hibana giving himself a kill onto the Yellow, I believe. Yep, so now it's a 3v3 with about a minute left. You are able to execute here as Jaeger again plays aggressively inside a freezer. But this time is not going to pick up, it's just going to hold the cross of where Ace is going to go through. Paladin, however, is already going to take into Pillar as, there we go, another player that'll be the Ace taking down the Jaeger, I believe that was inside of Freezer, as Paladin is inside of Pillar here. Will actually get taken down by the SMG-11 of Slybo, and now to 2v2. 35 seconds left, the Malusi gadget will be a bit, bit of a pain for the Hibana here, as they are going to be able to go for this crossfire. Smoke Cannon's just going out, just smoking up the line of sights. Now he's not taking his time there, almost dying from pillars. The plan will be trying to go down, but no. Malusi will take down Hibana, and there we go. Malusi will take down the ace as well. And that's GTFO, claiming their fourth round in a row. Wow, yeah. Uh, that Jaeger getting that double kill inside of Freezer really proving to be uh, quite the menace. I, and, what, what's interesting to note is that Praz has gotten basically been the opening kill or death every single round and more often than not it was the opening kill it just seems that Ambo Fatima aren't able to capitalize on that man man dis well man advantage they have man disadvantage that um gtfo have yeah it's definitely interesting to see that they're not closing out these rounds where they get those early picks i think it's a, a well-known statistic that like uh, the team that gets the opening pick in the round often wins the round like most of the time so very interesting there as uh we do see the the cav being sick pick to uh wamai i was kind of hoping we would see the cav sick picked off because i don't like seeing cav i think she's uh interesting but she doesn't bring anything other than uh meanness i guess you could say i we saw the mirror being teased a little bit there i was i was really hoping for a mirror but at the same time the defenses have been going so well, there's really no point in changing the formula, right? If, it, if it's not yeah. broken, don't fix it. Yeah, I think that's a fair, fair rule to go by. We are going to see, uh, as the attackers, go, oh, I'm sorry, as the defenders go to the, to the top floor, um, we will be seeing an IQ being brought. Now, I'm not sure what this is to counter, but maybe it's just for the gun, you know? We have seen it before where IQ has been brought for the gun and IQ has just fragged out, so it could be one of those days, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Probably for Classroom though, right? To uh, shoot out bandit batteries from Classroom. Well, to be honest, I think they just bought it for the gun. Yeah. <laughs> like, you I don't, don't, you don't really that. need the IQ gadgets to take down bandit batteries. Like, yeah. If, if it's a Kai, maybe it's a bit more understandable, but it's not a Kai. Yeah, you just get Ash below, right, and then uh, she gets rid of the bandit batteries with one one charge, and that's pretty fine. Well, but talking about the IQ, though, she's already made her way really quickly into Trophy. So anyone who rotates here will be in a bit of a pickle, but I think they'll be fine. Just fading a few shots out here, Billy Meister. I Some of these names are very strange to pronounce. But, um, yeah, Billy Meister finding out where the IQ is, and is just peeking aggressively a little bit, just to see if he can maybe get himself a kill. And, uh, yeah. yeah, Ash playing on this big window here, looking to get a free pick if Jaeger is un uh, unwary of, or not wary, sorry, of where the Ash is playing. He just the the word you're him. looking for is unaware, Jim. Unaware, that is the correct word, actually, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, kind of eating my own, my own tongue right now as I'm struggling to speak. Well, it seems like... Yeah, it seems that the ace charges have been impact tricked off here, so the side of Amber Fatima have been stalled out quite a bit, as it doesn't really matter at the end of the day, because Havana will be taking 
at least opening a little bit of the wall. It's not exactly able to go through at the moment, but it is something that you now have the line of sight. Umayi will be playing close, however, and oh, that talks about close. That will be Malusi playing close on that trophy door, and they're able to get that kill onto Mal. The IQ. Uh, <laughs> as uh, that's the entry flag gone, basically. With a minute left, Zofia is trying to peek that small hole inside of Attic. I'm not sure how they managed to get that, but they did manage to get that. So the bandit has dropped down the stairs, trying to see if they can maybe go for a flank. As we say that, though, I believe that was Prize taking down the, the Lucy there. So 4v4 now, but 3v4 actually, as the Ace gives himself a kill as well. So now DTFO, who look like they're in such a commanding position, are no longer in a great position. As, as I say that, Caster's Curse. We get a double kill coming out from the side of Wamai, so now uh, it doesn't seem that Ember Fatima are in a great position to win this out. Yeah, trades back and forth, and then just a double from JTD. That was a pretty pretty crazy play from the Wamai there, as he manages to just collect on two kills, two free kills that were waiting for him. Jaeger gets one on the flank, that's ace down, so it's just a 1v3 now for the Ash. Paladin, can he do it? He's got 10 seconds to find three frags, I'm not sure if he's going to be able to do it, it's not looking likely. He sees the Jaeger swing in the door and he doesn't even get him as uh, Wamai again to take him out. That was a very good round there from the defense, just stalling out the attack and uh, to just get the frags and winning that round, I guess. Yeah, that impact trick must, was, was very crucial to how that round played out because with those impact trick, the, that's a lot of your hard reach gone. You can't really take into attic. You, can, you can't get the line of sight into attic. And furthermore, that's a lot of utility and time gone, right? Yeah. With, you you saw how that stalled out. They didn't really have time to make an ex execute anymore. They had to try and stack up around um, where was that? A trophy door. Sorry, they had to stack up trophy door, and eventually just got taken out there, as all of their hard reach was gone as well. If I if if I saw that correctly. Yeah, those impact tricks were really doing damage. Like uh, like you said. We are going to see the defense uh, as the uh, Amber Fatima actually switch sides, so now they're on the defense. They're going top floor for their first sight, and uh, we are going to see Malusi being sick picked from. Uh, I'm not sure who it was. Was it Valk? Did we see them sick pick off? No, Valk was banned. I'm actually. Oh, Valk was banned, of course, yeah. I'm not quite sure. I, I wasn't paying much attention. Yeah, I was. Uh, uh, yeah. Kind of my job, but. Uh... Well, I, well, I, what I was just going to say is that. We have to keep in mind, this is a Maverick and Thatcher ban on Oregon. Oregon, a relatively defender-sided map, with the Maverick and Thatcher ban, isn't going to make the attacker's job easier. Definitely not. Yeah, very true, actually. It does look like they are opening up one of the closet walls. I'm not sure whether that's just to... Just to, uh, make the hard breach a bit harder to put on there, or... I'm not sure, but maybe make the impact trick easier. But it does look like the walls just full up for it. Uh, full on open. So, oh, and there's two ADS inside of closet. So it does look like they're going to be going for some sort of hold. You've got you've got the Malusi gadget on that master door as well, or well, on the bed, but it covers the master door. What's interesting is that we don't see a shield there. Normally, if you would see an extension into closet, would see like ADSs and a shield and a banshee. So you saw the Ella still have the shield in the pocket a few seconds ago, but now it's been placed down. Hopefully, it's by closet, and if not, I think they're hindering themselves more than anything else, but time will tell. Yeah, we are going to see uh, the attackers take this tower control, uh, so it looks like their first first uh, way of attacking is just to open up that attic wall. Uh, and since Master Wall's already open, it looks like as long as they just clear the utility in there, that will be free for them as well. What I think you can tell immediately is the speed of which GTFO take compared to which Avez take, or Amber Fatima, sorry. I'm just looking at the right side, everyone's called Avez. So... <laughs> yeah, easy mistake. Yeah, so the speed of which GTFO are trying to take her is a lot slower than Amber Fatima. You see two players on the balcony of um, Master with already about a minute and a half gone, whereas Amber Fatima would have already had a player inside of Trophy about 20 seconds ago, you know? Yeah, definitely. Uh... Their at Amber Fatima's attacks were a lot faster. I'm not sure whether it's pronounced Am Amber Fatima or... But, uh... <laughs> yeah, I don't know, I'm just saying what I would think it is. Yeah, oh, my oh God. Two quick God. kills. And it looks like Ella just lasered the ace off of that upside down rapple there. That's the, that's the closet breach doing work and that's a third going down. As uh, looks like Wamai got a pick. The fourth, that's a double kill for the... Oh my God, just a flawless round coming out from the defense. 
Uh, I don't know what else to say, really. They just, uh, just demolished them. <laughs> you saw some really unconventional walls being opened there. You see the right side of that kid's wall being opened instead of the left side. You see closet wall being opened completely up with the shield playing there. So unconventional, but it worked out as uh, we did see Amber Fatima take their first round on the defense. Uh, well, I guess their first defensive round that they could have taken, but still. It's a really good hold there. Flawless round, as we did see. So it's going to be interesting, interesting to see if they're able to carry that momentum with them into this next round on the basement defense. Seeing the alibi being brought out by a different team this time, um, I'm not sure whether there's something that we don't know about, but why? I don't know why teams just keep bringing alibi. I mean, we played alibi Maybe because her gun's fun to play. <laughs> I mean, that's fair enough, I guess. And she brings that shield, so... Yeah, the shield's there relevant. Is we just like the gun. Fair enough, fair enough. Just like the IQ pick, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, I definitely prefer playing a, a Goyo here. I mean, if you're playing for the gun, it makes sense. But yet again, we see them reinforcing off the elbow position here. I think elbow is just, I think blue is just too strong to give up, actually. I, I really like holding it because you waste all the time there. And then you haven't even got that much plant denial. You've got like what, a C4 and three smokes. It's not really enough to hold them out once the attack gets blue and they can just go for that execute. What's interesting to take note of is that Amber Fatima, Amber Fatima, when they were attacking basement, both times they decided to leave blue completely alone, even though there was no like presence inside of blue. And they yeah. decided to go for that freezer main stairs take, which didn't work out really too well for them. But it seems that GTFO will try to take this a bit differently as they will try to extend their way not extend their way, sorry, push their way into blue and uh, take from there instead of going for that freezer take that GT. well, instead of going for that freezer take that Amber Fatima tried to do originally. Yeah, it looks like uh, GTFO just joined out blue and saw that it was clear, so I'm not sure whether they're going to be pushing in right now. It looks like Ash is on the other side of the map though, and she's looking to backstab, I, I guess. Um, but going for those uh, picks of defenders who are unaware but it looks like three attackers and four even are on this side so i guess they're just ditching blue again i i still don't see why you ditch blue here I think it's yeah free. first kill here going for the side well i guess two kills now going for the side of amber fatima but as i say that the second kill also comes out for gtfo so with only a minute gone that's two kills going either way to a 3v3 and we're gonna oh i say that now it's a 2v2 as Extremely well played refrag potential there. You know, I was talking about that earlier in the few rounds early. As Paladin has actually made his way into uh, Kitchen, just trying to go for that Zulu flank. And I have to say, it's curious to see these teams try and take these head on. As we're going to see that, ooh, there had to be some information or sound there as Ash gets himself a kill onto Paladin. Now it's a 2v1 with Naj Fakir's left on his own downstairs as he tries to peek up aggressively on those laundry stairs. But he did shoot a drone, so it was probably called out as the side of GTFO are now going to try and rotate around. The freezer cam is going to spot out the Ash, and now he's just going to not push that instead, as Smoke has made his way into freezer. So we're just going to see a bit of a rotate, and uh, with a minute left, I'm sure a lot of things can still happen. Yeah, it looks like the attackers are finally trying to take Pillar here. Um, now they've decided to rotate over, it looks like they're maybe going to get the hatch, I'm not sure what they're going for here, but... Uh, Smoke is all alone on site as he is the last one left, so we'll see if the attackers can close this one out. Hatch is open already, so it looks like they it looks like the defenders already opened it just to make them uh, make themselves have an easier retreat back, but they all died on the roam anyway, so it didn't really matter. Ash is all the way down in pillar, she takes out the, the shield in, inside of freezer. I think the ADS has got them, two ADSs actually, as uh, now the third oh, one are finally going to get them. But now there's a second shield, and Naj is playing this perfectly as he's using his smoke cannon to just deny time. Now he has a pixel angle here inside of stock, and this is going to be a bit of a slight problem for the side of GTFO. I'm not sure why they're trying to push this instead of going for the plant, but a few shots are going to come out from Ash Fakir's as the first bullet lands onto the Ash, well not even the Ash, the first bullet lands onto the head. Now Ash has to push aggressively into a shotgun, and wins oh. it out! Oh no! The Ash winning out the round there for GTFO as they've guaranteed themselves a point as the smoke misses his shotgun blast and is able- and Ash wins it out! That is uh, truly unfortunate there from the smoke just missing that shot and letting the Ash capitalize off of that. That, that was so close. That played looked... it so perfectly and to just mess it up in the last second 
is extremely unfortunate. Yeah, that was, uh, I, I think that was a defender round. Well, I mean, it was an attack around up until he got that pick on ace in the hallway. And then I, yeah, if he had, if he had hit that shot, that was, uh, that was his round in the bag. And now we are going to see GTFO going on to match point against the team that we thought we were going to win. Yeah, I mean, I'm just trying to base it off of my previous, previous experiences. And I have to say, we had like three draws, and I think GTFO were one of them on Oregon, no less. So I, I'm not, I'm just yeah. very confused. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess maybe Villa isn't your map. <laughs> I, I apparently not. To be fair, we had we had like advantage like three, four, three, four times on that map, and then we just threw it away. But moving on back to this game though, uh, yeah, that was really unfortunate for the side of Amber Fatima. They probably should have won that out after the attackers decided to take extremely long time and i have to say the decision as well to push deep through that long haul must was a really poor decision they weren't aware of the shield that was there and then tried to they go for a repeat as well to try and take it on they really should have just pushed them through the door and gone to the plant i reckon yeah i think that probably would have worked uh, just as well but i guess the attackers managed to uh, win the round out so can't can't blame them uh, on that one we are going to see the same rope setup from the defenders. Uh, I, I'm not sure what they're trying to accomplish with this because it, they've just all been dying on the roam so far and it's not been really working out for them. See, I think, mm, I think the wrong was actually decent, right? They managed to take down a lot of players, they managed to waste a lot of time. So it was a, it was a 2v2 basically by the end of it, but then you saw the bandit. Once it was a 2v2, I would reckon... The misplay there was from a bandit trying to play inside of Zulu and go for that kill where he just got taken down by the Ash. And I think that's where all the problems started. I think mean, refract potential yeah. and everything was great. They managed to get them killed. They managed to do everything right. And then it was that one player that messed up the round. Yeah. It does look like the... It does look like GTFO are going to be going for this blue attack. Now, we've been talking about how blue has been open this whole time and the attackers just haven't gone to take it but it looks like they're listening and and now they're looking to take that control so now, with oh, this extension yeah. though i think you have to be a bit more wary about taking blue i mean slider takes a bit of damage i'm not sure where from oh it's inside of uh blue so he's got elbow but what I, what I was trying to say is that they need to be wary of that player on that electric hatch right you need to be scared i guess is the right word to use here you see Captain Trap Firebolt and Smoke's coming out. Uh, are they going for the Execute? It seems they're going for an Execute already. Wow, this this would be really f uh, a fast Execute compared to a lot of the other rounds we've seen if, if they go for it. Smoke on this tight angle, he gets one. Oh, that was Alibi actually through the Rotate Hole uh, getting one. And she gets two, as that's a double for her on the round. She prones right next to the shield, and it looks like there's one more outside the breach there. Wait for her. She's on a sliver of HP as Jaeger pushes up, looking to get this frag. But Ash, walking up the stairs, she gets taken out. It's a 1v5 already as uh, Bandit gets another somewhere else. And uh, that's a flawless round from the defense. Just as we were saying, how uh, taking blue uh, is like the correct option. Uh, the attack just gets shut down. The attack in blue was the correct option, but it's not exactly the first thing you need to do. I think the first thing you need to do is probably take meeting there. Meeting yeah. in blue. Very true, yeah. When I uh, when I originally said take blue, I obviously meant take meeting as well, you know. Yeah. Um, I'm just saying that it was the right idea, <laughs> but it was executed poorly from, from the side of uh, GTFO. As Amber Fatima yeah. getting themselves a second flawless round on their defense wins. I mean, it's interesting to see them just sprinting through the breach there. You'd think that they'd maybe smoke off the rotate hole or closet or something in order to push in, but I believe they smoked deep and uh, tried rushing in, and they just got cut off by 90-degree crossfires, and it just didn't work out for them. Yeah, they died from those long angles where they couldn't Defense root anyone out, and with the smoke canisters being ADS and misplaced, and then the... What's it, what you might call it? Capitao as well, the piss... Uh, smoke bolt. I'm I'm failing to speak English today, but with the capital <laughs> missing its uh, smokes and ace as well, they weren't able to cut off the long lines of sights, and because of that, they weren't able to exactly push into sight the way they wanted to. So they ran in, and then they got fragged. 
yeah, definitely wasn't the most pretty of sights for the attackers there. We are going to see the defenders go to top four now, and they are doing an in another interesting strat where they open up the uh, attic to trophy wall. And uh, we, I believe we saw this in a round uh, the other day, but it looks like they're doing exactly the same hold, actually. So if GTF are able to read into this, they would probably go below with the action of Sophia and try and get that shield from below. Because that, that was the main thing slowing them down last time. They spent about a minute and a half on the balcony, not able to push into mash or anything like that because they were, just, they were scared of the shield that was peaking the breach aggressively, right? But if they go yeah. below, they get the shield, which is pretty much free, then they won't have the same problem. They won't exactly be delayed as much. And they help, they might even get like, um, they might even get a pick through the vertical hold. So there's, you really should be going below if there is a shield. And if there is not a shield, then make your way into master as quickly as you can, right? Yeah, yeah. You might be right here, and it does look like Sophia is going to be entering through the garage, so... It looks like she's going for something, but... I'm not sure what she impacted instead, something inside of... Uh, armory. Looks like it's a floor of Armory, yeah. So they think there's a player inside of Armory, but... They just used a bunch of utility to find out there was no player there. Yeah, uh, interesting you'd, uh... You, you didn't join that, uh, just to make sure you weren't wasting your utility, but... In the meantime, Ash gets taken out by Malusi on the roam. Malusi was just hiding inside a meeting and strikes when it's time. So that that flag there, the flag there that Malusi is now going to opt to rotate into Green Hall. And um, yeah, talking about droning, it seems that GTFO aren't exactly doing much of that as they waste a bunch of utility inside of Armory. And then they also die to a roamer inside of meeting. So already, Amber Fatima have the advantage after about a minute and a half because. They have man advantage and they also have utility advantage. Talking about a man advantage, the second one going in the favor of Fatima, as that'll be Paladin, I believe that was, taking down the ace. 3 yeah. and 5 now. Let's see. Okay, the shield is in the same place, and now they can't exactly push Master either. I believe Jaeger. Sure. What do you reckon this is gonna. What, what, how do you reckon this is gonna play out? I think uh, defenders have got this one in the bag. I don't think the attackers can come back, as we see Malusi get another one on the roam, I believe that was, and she gets taken out by the by the Zofia on those main stairs. I was just about to say how uh, the the attack weren't seeming very strong, but Driveri just jumps in the window and gets a pick onto the Maestro inside of sight. He has a uh, sight control, it looks like. I'm not sure if they if JTD knows about this and maybe he can rotate around. And it does look like he's trying to do so. Driveri gets another. Just as I was saying that this round wasn't going to be in the favor of the the uh, attackers, it looks like they're bringing it back as as the. Uh, the Ella is just trying to one-tap here, and okay, finally they get saved. My uh, caster's curse not coming to reality. I reckon that was a bit too close for comfort there for the side of Amber Fatima. However, they gave away too many one very one v one gunfights. Then eventually they won it out, but I don't think they would be very happy with that win. Yeah, no, they definitely overswung and uh, gave away a few picks there. They really should be more careful if uh, they're going to win these rounds. By the way, if my maths is correct, I don't think either of these teams can get first place now. Um, yeah, if a draw is the most, I, I'm not sure if they if can. If GTFO win, they would still, at this point, be below Team 7 in a round differential. So I believe this has just confirmed Team 7 winning the, well, the league portion before the playoffs, I think. If I'm not mistaken, at least. Oh, how does it feel to uh, have drawn against... Uh... The top team. Need to locate and the, the I, mean, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how I'm feeling at this point. <laughs> I'm just very <laughs> confused. I think it's the best best way to put this. Yeah, I mean, we can we can put them down to like good days and bad days, but you know, some te sometimes the team shows up against the team and sometimes they don't. So, you know, anything can happen in these games. So, I guess once once you've seen enough, you come to expect a lot of strange things happening. Yeah, I mean, also it's Oregon. This is like one of the maps where either team can really succeed, if you know what I mean. Like, yeah. you, you know how old Oregon pre rework was like, this is the team where big, this is the map where big teams go die, basically. Where, where big teams fall. Yeah. Because anyone can win that map. And I think it's a little bit the same nowadays, but it's more, more of a, it's very even. Unless a team is significantly better than the other one. In that on that day, I think it can go very easily to a draw, or at least overtime, if if there was overtime. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, yeah. Like, we were talking about this before the game started, and we were just saying how Oregon is good for every team, really. Every team has strats on this map, and they all, they're all pretty much the same, and they all, they all work, and they all win rounds, so... It's not like one team can be better than the other, they all, they all play the same. Just as I'm saying that, Hammer Fatima gets the first kill, and that's Malusi. Uh, killing out the uh, Ash there. Ash has been the opening pick for the past two rounds, maybe more, but that's as much as I've been keeping track of. Wait, I s I'm surely I'm not. I saw the fuse going to security. I'm not sure if that was because of like frame or something, but I swear I saw like the body of Fraz there. But the FO12 of the L are gonna go through the floor and actually get himself a kill onto the fuse as I say that, and now it's a 3v5 in the favor of Amber Fatima, and it seems like they're probably going to be able to close out this round as well. Was that a trade? Uh, I believe so, maybe? No, I think Thermite got one, uh, and then he didn't get traded back, but <laughs> he's in a 1v4, he gets one, so he's in a 1v3, that's a double for him. This could be a 1v5 clutch if he can he can pull this one off. It's not looking likely though, as he, his door gets smoked off, and Elle's just waiting around the corner with a shotgun, so... He has fate either way he's going. GTFO are trying to rush this. They're not trying to take yeah. any map control. They're just trying to go in and be like, hey, I'm going to take this. And to be fair, I think they also realize now they can't go first. So they're a little bit less worried about how the map plays out now. But Sliver will get himself a kill onto the L, I believe that was, inside of Zulu. So now it's a bit more winnable, but still unlikely, as he is on very low HP and... Smoke will be playing in a very off angle. His mute has gone upstairs as well to play these vertical holes. So, 45 seconds left. It's up to Slyber to see what he can do. Yeah, we haven't really spoke about it, but seeing the glass on the fuse being brought on this site, I mean, fuse through the floor makes sense, uh, but uh, it doesn't work out as Amber Fatima gets the round down. Oh, Thermite almost clutching that, but not working out in the end. Glass being a very weird pick, but, you know... Uh, I mean, it doesn't look like they're trying anymore. It's, it is a 6-5 now, so Abba Fatima could bring this back to a draw. I mean, hey, you say the fuse would work for vertical, but it would only work if they actually try to take vertical, you know? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> if, if fuse goes straight into security, it's not going to do anything. <laughs> I don't know what they were trying to do there, and I mean, Glass is just bad either way, so I don't know why you'd ever pick him. Hey, don't slate on my boy Banana Vision. <laughs> Banana Vision. That's a name I have never heard, and I will gladly remember that. You better imagine Banana... I, 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 sorry. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I, I think I struggled to speak a little bit there, but carrying on. We're going to see the last round now, and the last round will be played uh, by Amber for Team in Basement. And uh, this is the one site that GTFO managed to win their attack on, so let's see if they're going to be able to win it out, or if they're going to be able to just get a point only out of it. Yeah, I wonder if they're going to be doing that crazy uh, rope setup again. I'm not sure if, it, if they are, but they aren't playing inside of blue, so they probably are. We do see them opening the hatch as well, so yeah, that just confirms to what we were thinking, and they are going to be playing above. Ten seconds remaining. Uh, again, this strat, I've, I'd like... I've never really seen it before, and I just, I don't know, I just prefer the bunker strat, really, where you just, all five on site, you have people watching both sides, and blue is your main focus, and you just stop people from going in, and it wastes a lot of time, and the attack can't really do much. I think this strat was a, it's, it's a bit of a variation as to the old Empire strat on old Oregon, where they basically come, like, are roaming throughout the entire map. They would send like ah, true, yeah. joystick inside of kids, I think that was, and then they would have like a few people playing inside of meeting with the hatches open and then have a rotate into kitchen and showers, I think it was at the time. So it, it's, it's a bit of a variation of that, but you see far less of that now as the map has gotten a bit bigger and it's a lot harder to hold, basically. Yeah, there's a lot of different places where defenders can play, but it doesn't mean that defenders uh, can take up the whole map. This map is huge, like you said, and uh, there's often too much space for the defenders to actually occupy. We're just seeing them waste a little bit of time, though, as the Jackal Track does scan out the alibi inside of top four, and the Yana also just trying to drone in a little bit as Jaegers are just enjoying a little nice walk inside a freezer. Yeah, he's uh, having a stroll. Yeah, he's just vibing. 
But um, we're gonna see GTFO now try to take their way down those tower stairs. That'll be the Ash trying to take it down. I think Jaeger is also ready there inside of Pillar just to take that challenge head on. Not much being done by the attack so far as uh, I don't know whether they know what they're trying to do here. It does look like they're going to be going for that same uh, freezer laundry attack, but do you know where those bonnet pellets were, by the way. Maybe it was on Atacatch. I think it was on Atacatch. I would, yeah, I would, I would assume, but it's by the Atacatch. Or maybe no, sure. Uh, I don't know. Point is, uh, it's been two minutes. There's not been any gun. <sighs> off the scarce. The Jaeger gets the first gunfight onto the Ash. That'll be the Ash taken down, and that'll be the entry frag going in the favor of uh, favor of Amber Fatima. As um, Alibi now will be trying to push her way up those tower stairs, but there will be a refrag, whether it's late or not is irrelevant, as the refrag does come out onto that Jaeger, and that'll now be a 4v4, but with time advantage and sight advantage probably going in the favour of Amber Fatima, GTFO really need to make a play here. Yeah, 4v4, it's uh, very defender favoured. Uh, just as I say that, Praz gets a pick onto the Jackal, so 3v4 now for the attackers to worm their way out of. And it's it's not looking likely that they're gonna pull this round back, but we've seen we've seen teams do it before, so we'll see if they can do yeah, it. Well, at Fifteen seconds left. They're gonna try and go for a blue. Ayana's just gonna run in, not realizing Paladin is there, and Paladin gets himself a second kill, and that'll just be Amber Fatima cleaning out shot. And there'll be a draw point going either way, and neither team's able to get into the top of the league. So that'll be the end of GTFO versus Amber Fatima. Yeah, well, uh, something to take from that game is that uh, both teams having very poor attacks, I would say, but, I mean, with the Thatcher Maverick ban, it's, uh, you can kind of excuse it. Uh, yeah, they, they, weren't they 6-1 up, or was it 6-2 up? No, they, they were 6-2 were six, six, up. They were 6-2, yeah, because they got, it went 5-2, and then 6-2, yeah. Yeah, I think there were a few odd plays on both sides, but at the end of the day, I think with how poorly done the attacks were even factory and like maverick and thatcher vans with how poor the attacks were i think it's a relatively fair result you would say yeah i think that's i think it's a fair result both teams doing well on their defense and uh just you know playing the rounds win, winning the rounds and uh bringing bringing it to a 6-6 six, six score line yeah so I think, no, that's not the last game. There's one more game that's about to happen now, isn't there? Uh, I believe so, yeah. It's so that's the second to last game then of Hydro League, or at least the regular season. Not factory in the playoffs, of course. And I think yes. that's us done, right? Yeah, uh, it's been a very nice season to cast, uh, especially casting Sad Little Men all the way through. It's been very fun <laughs> watching them progress through the stage and uh, get their wins where they can and... Uh, a lot of losses. <laughs> hey, hey, we had the same amount of draws as losses, okay? Fair enough. Okay, well, okay, draws and losses then. <laughs> All right. It's been a it pleasure, better. and um, yeah. I'll see you next time. Thank you for casting uh, with me, and uh, yeah, hope everybody has a good evening.